Carla Feiferova is our next speaker, and she has a PhD in chemistry, then she worked uh, in bioinformatics, and now she works a lot with open data. So uh, her company is collecting data on all the companies in the Czech Republic and Slovakia, and um, she's here to talk about something else, not open data or bioinformatics. She started with her friend a, a Twitter account called Python Tip that contains a lot of really cool tips for Python programming, and she's gonna share some of her favorites with us. Welcome, Carla. Uh, so, so hello, Thank, thanks for the introduction. And as, as Johnny said, I'm, I'm Carla, and uh, I, I work in Imper, uh, which is a company who, which collects all, all, the, all, the, all the data about Czech and Slovak companies and put them together in one place. So if there's someone from Slovak uh, business registry, I want to talk with you <laughs> after. <laughs> and yeah, I, I'm not a programmer from, from the beginning. I, I studied chemistry, then I set the, the lab to fire. So I moved to crystallography. I was shining uh, X-rays to, to crystals and trying to get the, the structure. Then I moved to bioinformatics and then finally to, to, to Python. So today's talk will be about snakes, which means obviously Python, and birds, which, which means Twitter. And it will be about the Twitter account Python, Python tip. Uh, how it started, or, okay. In this talk, we will, we will solve also a very, very important question. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? And I will, I will tell you the answer in the, in the end of the talk. So, so now you can think, think about it and make your guesses. So. How, how the Twitter account started. So it was around January 2017. I was crystallographer in Prague, so nothing, nothing with programming. Uh, Petr was in, in Maine, in the uh, east coast of the United States. And we were thinking it was just, we, were, we had a Skype call with some wine and so on, and we were thinking what to do, do together, because you, you don't go hiking if one is in Prague and uh, the second one is the, in the United States. So let's, let's do something fun together, but what, what would it be? So with the wine, we, we think, let's learn Python. It, it will be fun, <laughs> they said. So people, people learn in di different ways. Some, some people read, read books. Uh, I am more the type which tries to do things and break things and Google Stack Overflow and to look, look what, what works together and what doesn't. So, and also if, when, you, when you're learning something, it uh, really helps to share, share your knowledge, so share the things you, you learn. So we, we thought, thought it would be a good idea to, to start a Twitter account we, when we will share some short things we, we just learned. And uh, the inspiration was uh, a similar, similar account by, I think, Microsoft engineers who, who in the time shared R tips, uh, daily R, R tip. I don't know if it exists, uh, still exists, but in the time it was uh, quite a big account. So we started daily Python tip, and first tweet was in February 2017. Six months later, I remember Peter wrote on his on his Twitter that. We, we, the account has now more than 1,000 followers and we are running out of tips because we were trying to write something every day. So it was half, half a year of tips and we, we didn't know what, what to tweet, tweet more, what, to, what more to tweet, but we, we continued. And in June, June 2019, uh, we had 10,000 10, followers and still still didn't know what to tweet. <laughs> and yeah, to, today, today it's like we have, uh, every, every month we have about 500 new, new followers. I don't, I don't know what's the big jump in January 18, but uh, anyways, 
at the moment, uh, the, the account has about 37,000 of, of followers. And we, we don't tweet daily anymore, but just, just occasionally. And, well, I, I, want to, I want to share some, really, some successful tweets with, with you. The tweets which, which had mo most uh, impression, most likes, most retweets. So we were quite a lot. Th we, were, we were thinking quite a lot what what makes a successful tweet, because you know you, you are thinking quite hard what to what uh, smart you you will tweet about classes and instances and variables and things inside Python, and nobody notices and you, something really smart and three likes. Then you you will write something for beginners like enumerate and well. You, you, have, you have 100 retweets and, well, I didn't know that and, uh, well. So, so, I think most successful tweets was uh, things like new version of Python, obviously. Then uh, funny, funny things like, like April Fools and Easter eggs in Python. Then em emoji is always good. So, I have a question for you. What what do you think? What happens if you reverse string like that? Welcome in United States. So, make your guess, and we will try it with Python. So, reverse the string. You, you have your guess, and you have welcome in Bulgaria. <laughs> and uh, have you have you any any clue how how that happened? Yeah, sure. Yeah, because if you if you write it like this, you can see you have. Can I? Yeah. Or not? Go back. You have like uh, these uh, regional identificators B and G. So if you reverse reverse it, you from from the flag of Great Britain, you 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 got the flag of Bulgaria. So other, other beginner things which were quite successful was things with unpacking, with the star notation. So things like this. So, okay, I don't see. So if you use star in, in, the, in the middle, you get A is the first one. The C, C is the, the, the last, last item of the list and the B, B is the rest. Another thing with uh, unpacking and printing, so you can you can even use a separator when printing list like this. Then there were some, I think, zip magic. It was always successful, like zip zip to list or zip to iterators together, make list of. And from, from, the, from the zip object, you can make list of, uh, list of these, these pairs, or you can even make dictionary of, of these pairs of the, the items of, 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 the, of the tool list. And you can go, go back again, unzip your zip with zip. So it was always, it, it was always successful to write something like this. Then there were, some, there were things like, sort of shoot, shoot yourself in, in the leg. So do you think the, the A, A plus B or A plus equals B, it will be always the same? So in the, in the, first, in the first example, we have a list A. Then you, we, we will write B, B is equals A. Then at some Happens, uh, happens some new new list to, to A and try to write uh, and print A and B. So we can see that in this case A and B is different. So do you think will be what will be the case here? Will, will it be the same or not? So now it's now it's. Now, now A and B will be the same after, after this operation. And 
the, that's because uh, the, the plus equals operator can be, can be in some cl classes defined differently, implemented differently. So, and it is the case in, in list. So, in the first case, A plus another list generates a new list and set A is reference to the, to the new object. So, so the B remains unchanged. Uh, referencing to, to, to the, old, the old object, but uh, the plus equals operator is mapped to extend method. So A is modified in place, so B is also changed. Then another sort of what, what the fact thinks will be generator expressions. So if we have array, 1815 and create generator expression like x for x in array if array count x is greater than zero and then we we change the array to, to another one so what do you think we, we will get so we are we are looking for items in array which are in array because count are greater than zero so we will get one eight fifteen or something else. Eight. Yes, good. <laughs> and that's because the, the in in generators is evaluated in the de declaration time, but the if clause is evaluated in runtime. So because in the second array, because in the new array is only eight, we will get only we will get eight only. Similar thing, we have the same, we have one array, three create generator, and then we will change, change the array. And we will change the array every time in different way. So one, one time we will, we, will, we will create new new array, and second time we will append, append an array item to, to the list. So, so what do you think will be, will be the generator the same or not? No. no. Good. And that's why in, in the first case, the, the array is, array one is then bound to new refer, references to the new object and generator references to the, to the old object. But in the second case, we, we change, change the array in place. So both array and generated uh, refer references this, to the same object. So, so the, the case one and case two are, is different. Then, then a lot, a lot of pathway get, got a lot of attention, I, and I have to say I am a bit jealous here, because in my work some some of the code base is still in Python 2.7, so no pathlib. <laughs> so I I and I really like to do so, so it's the motivation it really really motivates me to to update. So. One thing you can get absolute path from with pathlib, with path, path object resolve. You can use recursive globbing in pathlib by, by glob. Here I am just looking for all the GIF images in my presentation directory. You can get directory path of a Python script itself from within, or you can create new new directory with all missing parents if you use parents is true, and you won't trace. And if you use exist OK, uh, the this command won't trace exception in if the director directory already exists. Then. Then another thing is, uh, I think many, many of our followers are something like data scientists or data analysts. 
So pandas get often quite a lot of attention. Here I'm using like here, I, here I'm showing like to join the content of the two two string columns. Just use the string accessor, and you 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 then have uh, access to many met methods uh, with four strings like split, contains, cut, and so on. So here here I'm using string accessor, then cut, then separate, and, and from chip and Dale columns I can get. Uh, a column, column chip and Dale. Here is the quite a sort of easy, easy way to, to count percentage of missing values. First, I read, read a data set. It's some, 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 some class grades from, from, from the internet. And I, I, do, I, want, to, I want to know what, what is the percentage of missing values in each columns. So yeah, I use is null, which gives me boolean true or false. Do mean. And if I have only, only means, only, only once, once, everything is null, so, so mean will be one, so I will get 100%. If I, if I have only false in the columns, the mean will be zero. So zero percent. So so this is this is how I can get uh, the the percentage of missing values in Pandas data friend. There's some nice things like to explode list like columns. So in the variable one, I have a string. I have strings which which look look like like list. So I have the A B C then D E F. So I, to, I take the, the column, again, use the string accessor, split the string by, the, by comma, so I will get the list in, in, each col in each row. And then I use explode method, and from the list in column, I, I will get, have something like long, long data frame. So, so I'm going from the wide data frame or to the, to the long one. Then a lot of, lot of people use uh, Jupyter or IPython. I, I'm not going to talk much about here, just, just two things. As uh, almost everybody who use IPython or Jupyter notebooks knows, uh, if you use exclamation mark, you can write shell commands in, in your cells. So here I am, I'm just listing files by, ex by exclamation mark ls. But not so many people, and I know, and I, I didn't know it quite a lot of time, quite a long time, is that I can assign, assign to this, this listing or this, the, the output of, of this script command to a variable, to a Python variable. So I can write a equals exclamation mark ls, and I will get a list of of files in, in the directory, which I can use another, uh, later in, in my Python scripts on, in Jupyter Notebook. This is one of mo our most, uh, most, most favorite tweet. We, we tweeted this twice by sort of mistake. And every time, every time it got by number of retweets and number of, of likes, to the top top five, I think, to the top five of our favorite tweets. So I'm showing it here, even if I don't, don't never use it. And you, in Jupyter Notebook, you can use a library called Handcox, and you can render Python calculation code uh, in LaTeX in your, in your Jupyter Notebook. So maybe you, you will find it useful if, if you do some, some calculation like this in Jupyter. So, now we are here with the most important question of this talk. So, which came first, the chicken or the egg? So, who thinks that it is chicken? Raise your hand. Okay, one, two, 
three, four. Okay. And who who thinks it's it's the egg? Okay. Mm -hmm. I think ma majority is for the egg. So let Python dis decide. And Python thinks the first was chicken. <laughs> So question is solved. Python is always right, <laughs> and I think I can I can finish this talk by by us, with asking you to send us your your tips. You can use Bitly Python tip and use the form on, on that address. Or you can just mention mention us on Twitter if you want us to cite or retweet retweet you. So. Thank you for your tips and also thank you thank you for attention. Thank you so much Carla. Uh, may I go ahead and ask do you have any personal favorites is are there any personal favorite tips uh, for you you mentioned some of the popular ones but which ones resonated the most with you? I think I think lot of a lot of pandas uh, pandas things because at the moment I was I was uh, I was writing them uh, I was doing more data analysis than than scraping and backend uh, backend developers develop so so pandas was was the thing the, the things I I was using the most at, at the time of writing it. Is there a collection of these most tricky tweets to download? Uh, can I contribute my Python tips? So, so you kind of like touched on the last one on your last slide. Yeah. And mm, for the first one, uh, not yet, but uh, we we are planning to to make some like uh, ebook with with this with these tweets. Thank you. Do you reuse or retweet popular tips of your own account? Uh, sometimes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions from the audience? If not, let's give a big thanks to Carla. Mikrobit je programovateľný milý počítač, ktorý ti dovolí prepojiť informatiku s kreativitou. Dá sa programovať veľmi jednoducho a ovládať tak, aby robil presne to, čo chceš. O pár minút sme zvládli rozsvietiť vlastný obrázok na displeji a o chvíľu sme už obrázky diálkovo prepínali druhým mikrobitom. Mikrobit má v sebe aj super vychytávky, ako sú tlačidlá, senzor pohybu, kompas a teplomé. K mikrobitu ale môžeš pripojiť množstvo ďalších vecí. Tu programujeme, aká animácia sa nám má ukázať na LED pásiku. Ja som na ňom naprogramovala dúhu. Teraz programujeme podľa nôd kohútika Jarabého. Najlepšie na mikrobite je, že si viem vytvoriť napríklad blikajúceho robota alebo gitaru, ktorú ovládam tak, že ňou zatraciem, alebo futbalovú bránku, kde mi mikrobit počíta, koľko gólov som dala, alebo kúlové svietiace topánky a tisíc ďalších vecí, ktoré ešte len vymyslím. Mikrobit je hračka, ktorú schováš do dlane a vytvoríš z nej čokoľvek. Tak čo s ňou spravíš ty? Každých 60 sekúnd si 28 tisíc ľudí predplatí službu Netflix. Odošle sa 197 miliónov e-mailov, 
Stiahne sa 414 tisíc aplikácií a ukradne niekoľko tisíc hesiel. Na internete sa toho deje veľa. A všetko najdôležitejšie sa dozviete na Živé SK. Živé SK. Technológie ľudskou rečou.